So what I'm showing here is just a, a table that kind of illustrates the green area is where you want to be for, for these trades. And if you're a little bit off, it's not a big deal. You know, if you're at an 1 to 8.5 as, as opposed to a 9.0 exactly, I mean, because you can't always dictate exactly what you're going to get for a debit. So we use this to just sort of help us along there, right? The other thing that I want to show is that what we're really going after is this distribution of returns. And what this is, this is a skewed right, long tail distribution of returns. This methodology is, is what this actually provides. And this will provide you with that nice smooth equity curve, bottom left, top right. All right, let's, let's go back to the presentation and, and talk a little bit about what, once you're in the trade, like I said, getting into the trade is pretty easy. Take that one to nine risk to reward. You're in the trade, you're at a good price, you're fine. And now what you need to do is figure out when to get out. Now, ideally, you would like it or love it if the market moved and ended up right in the center of your butterfly and ended the day there because then you would have what's called a pin trade and you would have made the maximum profit. Now, if it goes in the exact opposite direction, chances are you're going to get 100% loss, but it's because it's small. Remember, it's that one to nine risk to reward. If you put on a trade that's say a thousand, well, 10 wide, that's a thousand dollars potential profit minus the one tenth minus a hundred dollars. So it's about $900 potential profit and you're risking a hundred dollars to make 900. If you lose the hundred you lose the hundred if you want to trade smaller then trade on the s i'm sorry the e mini s p and instead of going for a hundred dollar risk you're taking a fifty dollar risk to make basically the same thing 10 wide with a a dollar cost it's actually one half of that dollar because the e mini has a has a big point value of 50 instead of 100 so that $1 is actually equal to a $50 risk. If you want to trade the, the XSP, which is the micro version of the SPX, now you one tenth that size. So you have a lot of options to choose. Now, of course, 10 wide is probably, you know, that's really way narrower than I would go. Realistically, I was just using that to make the math easier. I would rather go 20, 25, 30, 35 wide. So once you're in the trade, that's the easy part. You're in, it's all kind of automatic. Now you have to manage it. If it starts coming in your direction, what do you do? Well, here's the thing. This is the toughest part of this strategy. And it's the thing that a lot of people struggle with about getting out. They, everyone wants to get the pin trade. So they try to hold on to the trade too long and then they end up outside of the profit tent with a max loss. Instead of when at times during that trade, they could have been 100, 200, even 300% up and then they give it all up because they didn't, they didn't end up in the middle of the, uh, the strategy. They allowed it to move out, which is crazy because those are profits. Those are real profits and they're huge profits. And to give it up just doesn't make sense. So you have to have some kind of system and methodology and a way of tracking your performance and your decision making and have a framework that helps you make those decisions. And then that framework should include a continuous improvement process where you're constantly taking a look at how things go and rate yourself and then figure out whether or not you're staying on track with your process and getting back onto that process. And over time, you're gonna get better and better and better and your profits are gonna go up and up and up and you'll know when to take profits and when to not wait around. <laughs> Or when to wait around for, you know, for the biggest score as well. Here's the deal with this type of trading. We're dealing with the exponential decay of premium. So not only is the directionality of our trade important. So in other words, delta is important. Where the, where price is moving. Obviously, when it's moving near our butterfly, we want to be near that butterfly. That is definitely important. But it also comes down to timing too. Because during that day, your, your profit profit curve is continually growing and growing and growing and eventually taking the shape of your butterfly at expiration. Now, you need to understand how that growth happens and where you are relative to the butterfly and whether or not it's a good risk to hang on or a better risk to grab your profit and run. So there's two dimensions to this. There's distance relative to the butterfly and then there's time of day. Now, Here's, here's something that I want to illustrate to you about time of day and exponential return. Now, we all know, we've all probably seen this profit curve, and this represents the, the rate of decay of the extrinsic value or the time value 
in an options contract as it comes to expiration on that zero DTE day. Now, zero DTE on the SPX, those are weekly options. They're eight days, they start eight days prior to when they expire. And so each one of these horizontal columns here represents a day. So we have day one here on the left and then the zero DTE day all the way into the right. And then the red line is the amount of premium that starts on day one and then what it ends up with on zero DTE, which is zero at the very very last second. Now, the interesting thing here is to note just how much it decays over the, that period of time. So if we were to split this up into threes, like the first three, right? So the first three, we're, we're from, let's see, I, I, hard to draw or anything here. So anyways, day one, day two, day three, we'll call that the first section, right? And then day four, day five, day six, that's the second section. And then day seven, day eight. Now, I just counted out the whole life cycle of that weekly option and the rate of decay of that curve. But if you were to take just the zero DTE day, that same rate of decay looks exactly like that on that last day, right? Because it's all relative now, it's a fractal. And so that last day can also be broken up into three different segments, just like I did here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that on the very last day, look how much profit or how much premium is actually decaying in that time period. It's about one half of the total premium throughout that entire time. Well, it's the same thing when you start talking about that last day. Most of the profit and most of the decay happens in that last third of the day. It's actually a little bit less than a third because, pre because the premium is going exponentially, we make those time periods a little shorter. So we've split the day up into three parts is what I'm saying. So just like we have it over eight days, let's do this over hours, right? So the first three hours we have here, the second three hours, and then the last two hours. It's the same scale, okay? So that's, that's what we're doing here. We're using the same scale for that last zero DTE. So that's going to all feed into how we create our framework for taking profits. Because we know that the vast majority of profits are going to, if we we're in the right spot, are going to happen in that very final hours of the day. But that doesn't mean that we can't make profit before that either. So, But it's unlikely that we're going to make much in the very beginning, the first three hours. Not, not unusual and not totally out of the question, but less likely. That doesn't mean that you can't take profits then. You certainly can. Because a lot of it will also depend on the the nature of or the direction of implied volatility because this premium will either get bloated or compressed depending on whether or not volatility is moving down or moving up respectively. <laughs>